Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here as I continue to review some Christmas movies and specials this week since Christmas Eve and Christmas is coming up on Friday and Saturday I'm going to review another Christmas movie that's the very first digital CGI animated motion capture that's being produced and directed by Robert Zemeckis the man who gave us Back to the Future and Tom Hanks who's the executive producer of the film as we all know he's he's an excellent actor he was in Forrest Gump who worked together with Rob Zemeckis he also had done a lot of great films in, in his career but together they're about to create a magical musical fantasy adventure that's based on the 1985 children's book by Chris Ben Allsberg, the same man who gave us Jumanji and Safira. It's called The Polar Express. It follows a story about a young boy on Christmas Eve. He spots a mysterious train headed on board straight to the North Pole. So he rides along with the rest of the kids heading off on this wonderful journey. So now they'll be able to meet good old Jolly St. Nick. That's right, Santa Claus. Yes. And I read the book when I was very young. I always remember it uh, as a kid. Uh, never forget everything that was in this story. Um, the one I remember the most too was at the end when the, this young boy finally gets the gift from Santa which turned out to be the Silver Bill where he's the only one well along with uh, his sister that they can actually hear the bell ring but their parents can't because they haven't met him yeah and I knew they were going to capture that uh, in the story yeah, and I'm very proud of that. I saw this in theaters uh, back in 2004. Yeah, it came out on November 10th. I almost shed in tears when I saw this. Almost. It was just incredible. Very stunning CGI animation that they use. Because this was done by Sony Imageworks. Yes, the same people that actually worked on all the CGI animation on Spider-Man and all the other uh, movies that they worked on. Yeah, like Men in Black. I think they also worked on Ghostbusters in the later years. Yeah. But they also had worked on other films um, by Robert Zemeckis. Aside from Monster House, um, they also did another Christmas movie called A Christmas Carol. That's another film I'm going to be reviewing, the one with Jim Carrey, yeah, based on the Charles Dickens novel. So now we know that he did two Christmas movies. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, I love this cover art too. That's the movie poster. It just looks incredible. And it does have special features included on the Blu-ray, which is also on the DVD. There's a Blu-ray 3D uh, release, too, so if you want to see the film in 3D. Um, it, it did actually got played at the IMAX uh, in 3D in theaters, too. They might have had a re-release, also. Uh, it was also told that um, in 2006, uh, at the Guinness World Records, that they actually gave an award for being the first all-digital capture film. Because... This is the first time they ever did a motion capture while they use you know all the human characters performing using their body languages, their facial expressions and all that that captures the spirit and how they look exactly like the actors themselves. You got Tom Hanks uh, playing multiple roles as a conductor along with uh, the narrator, the boy's father, the drifter who magically appears here and there who also helps the boy out too and most of all 
Santa Claus. Who would have thought that Tom Hanks would end up portraying Santa Claus just like how you know, his friend and and also a co-star of Toy Story, Tim Allen Wood. <laughs> there you go. Okay. And I know because, and I know Tom Hanks had worked with Robert Zemeckis since Forrest Gump. That earned him an Oscar for his performance. It was a second Oscar after Philadelphia. But he also joining in with his production company, I mean, he also wanted to capture the spirit as well because he too read the book and he loved it. And he was hoping that this will challenge every um, children out there who loves Christmas and they want to be able to read it by heart. Okay, well anyway, the special features on this Blu-ray, I'm just going to show you the, <laughs> the cover art too, the same as usual. Just the artwork of the movie poster. It has Smokey and Steamer song. Yes, and this was sung by the late great uh, Michael Jeter, who, interesting enough, uh, they dedicated to him. He passed away uh, before the film was released. Yeah, he, he passed away in 2003, uh, just the following week after John Ritter and, and Johnny Cash had passed sad or I think maybe it was uh, another week after I don't know but it, it, was, it was around that time uh, then there was the uh, look from you look familiar which shows the many polar faces of Tom Hanks yeah because he did play all the multiple roles credible a genuine ticket to ride documentary gallery which had five featurettes you know how they did it because they did shot this inside the um, the Sony Pictures um, studio lot, and that's how they created the animation by Sony Pictures Image Works. And yeah, you get to see them doing, just dressing up, wearing the suits, putting all the dots on their faces, so that way you know the the people behind it will actually be able to capture that directly onto their computers, and they'll put it all together, and they'll do a lot of animation. And they do everything that's provided. Yeah, incredible. Um, they show the true inspirations and offers adventure profiling Chris Van Allsburg. Yes, that's where they talk about uh, his work on all the books that he's done that eventually had been adaptations for movies, you know, like Jumanji and Safira. Yes, I know Jumanji's sequels, which. I'm not gonna count. I know it's part of it, but that's just that's Sony's idea. Then you got a song called "Believe" by Josh Groban. He actually performed at the Greek Theater. Um, that's in Los Angeles. Uh, the behind the scenes of "Believe," which brought the hit song met to a magical life at the recording studio, <laughs> of course. Queries of Effects Gallery, five motion capture sessions. We got everything here. Meet the Snow Angels, the Movie Makers, Christmas Memories. Yeah, they talk about all their true well, childhood memories of Christmas that they had that they'll never forget. And a theatrical trailer. Yeah. There's also like a teaser trailer um, you can find online too, but I'm sure you'll be able to see a beautiful theatrical trailer even in 35 millimeter prints and 4K and all, yeah. I'm kind of amazed this movie doesn't have a 4K release, but I really hope it does get one because this will be perfect for it. And it really deserves it too. So that way you get to have the stunning uh, picture quality. that will capture the spirit of them all. Yeah. And maybe they'll put the 3D version included too. If they make a special edition. Um, they also have this available on HBO Max. You can watch it on streaming. They also have it on other streaming sites too. But, but most of all, um, I like to focus on physical media because they deserve a lot of pride. They really do. Okay. So anyway, um, let's get right to it. Stars Tom Hanks, along with Josh Hutchison, 
because he provided the uh, motion capture image of of his facial expressions and all. Uh, Daryl Sabaro, yes, from Spy Kids. Uh, Nana Gay, um, joining in with uh, Chantel uh, Bavizo, Megan Moore, and Tanish. I think that's how you pronounce it, Tanash. Tanish. Uh, Peter Scolari, who just recently passed away. Yeah, it's sad. But as you may know, he was in the, the TV show with Tom Hanks called Bosom Buddies. Yeah, remember two buddies who are about to find a job and they wound up uh, cross-dressing as women because they wound up staying inside this one apartment. Yeah, because there was nowhere else to go to find a, a, a wonderful place, but they will someday. So they end up staying with the girls. <laughs> And we know their secrets. Um, and I know he went on to do the TV show um, called uh, New Hearts. He was also uh, <laughs> the husband of um, Stephanie, played by Julie Duffy. <laughs> yeah, they fell in love. He's also the uh, TV executive for CBS. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I miss him, though. He, he was a great actor. Uh, Hayden McFarlane, uh, Jimmy Bennett, uh, Matthew Hall, Eddie Deason, yes, Eddie Deason from Greece. And I know he's done a lot of movies and he's done a lot of voice acting of any kind. No matter how you hear his voice, no matter how he does all of his smirks and his uh, goofiness and all, I mean, you never get tired of that guy. I mean, even if it's a good movie or a bad film, he's always worth watching. No doubt, yeah. And he did an excellent job in this one too. Uh, with Jimmy uh, Pinchock, uh, Michael Jeter, I already mentioned already. He no longer with us, but I know he's been in other stuff. Like, yes, he played Mr. Noodle in Elmo's World. That's from Sesame Street. So I know you'll be able to remember him by heart. Yeah, he's the best part of them all, actually. Because <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Elmo. Uh, on the other hand, he was also in the movie The Fisher King with Robin Williams, God Rest His Soul too. I miss him. And it had Jeff Bridges in it too, and Mercedes Rule, and Amanda Plummer. Yeah, it was directed by Terry Gilliam. Uh, yeah, he played a role where he was actually uh, cross-dressing uh, when they were doing the, the bits at the home video place that they were working at. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was also in the movie Air Bud, where he played this abusive uh, clown performer. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, and he was also in the TV show with Burt Reynolds, also God vs. Soul, called Evening Shade. Yeah, alright. With Andre uh, Scolazzo, Leslie Semeca, Isabel La Pellegrina, uh, Chris Coppola, Charles Fletcher. Yeah, from Who Framed Roger Rabbits. Yep, another uh, Robert Zemeckis film. Um, he also done some voice acting, and he's a comedian himself and a writer. He's also done other stuff like Rango and We're Back, A Dinosaur Story, and makes a cameo in Back to the Future uh, movies. I think it was one of the sequels. And you also got Steven Tyler. Yes, Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. <laughs> Where he plays the elf lieutenant and the elf singer, too. Uh, what do you know? <laughs> okay. It's based on a book by Chris Ben Allsberg. It's um, written by Robert Zemeckis and William Boyles Jr. And, of course, directed by Robert Zemeckis. The movie begins, set on the night of Christmas Eve in Grand Rapids, Michigan, we meet a young boy known as Hero Boy, voiced by Daryl Sabara, who's grown skeptical about the existence of Santa Claus. He does live with his parents, the mother and father, who happens to be voiced by Tom Hanks. Uh, he also has a young sister. They're just getting ready to go to bed, getting ready for Christmas morning. They just set out some milk and cookies for Santa so he can arrive down the chimney, delivering all the gifts while having some, some snacks, and then he'll be on his way. Um, 
Because he also had spotted some old newspaper clippings of in-store Santa Claus around the world. And he thought, you know, all of this is just part of a myth and all. Kind of like, yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. Which, that's where Virginia is trying to find some proof. Okay. Uh, until he finally meet, sees a mysterious train known as the Polar Express. It arrives on time. That's where he went downstairs, grabbed a coat, accidentally uh, torn a patch of his pocket. It drops all these marbles around. Got out of the bedroom and headed off downstairs. And he meets the conductor, also voiced by Tom Hanks, who claims that it's on its way to the North Pole. Although reluctant at first, the boy climbs aboard and he wants a meeting. All the kids all headed off including this young spirited black girl known as Hero Girl, voiced by Nana Gay, and this smart, intelligent, know-it-all boy played by Eddie Deason. <laughs> yes. So, while they were on the Polar Express, it did stop to pick up a young boy named Billy, who's by Peter Scolari, and, but it's voiced by Jimmy Bennett. At first he refused to board, but he definitely changes his mind afterwards, prompting the boy to apply the, the emergency brake, because he was heading off right away, only to allow Billy to be on board. But unfortunately, by the time the children was giving some hot chocolate to a team of waiters, that's where we had that song and dance number, yeah, it was like a jazzy uh, swing tune with the conductor, you know, <laughs> singing along. Yeah, just incredible. Uh, Hero Girl basically just hides out um, her hot chocolate for Billy. So he's about to head off directly into the observant board where Billy is left all alone. Unfortunately, she forgot her ticket because it hasn't been validated. I mean, all of their golden tickets have been validated. You know, pushing all these holes leaves you like... Uh, a, a message around. So once he tries to do that, um, there was a huge blizzard going around, and it blew off his, blew off uh, her ticket, and it just moves around, kind of like in, in the scene of Forrest Gump. Sort of a nod to that too, where you know how you see the the, the fetter that Gump somehow found, and it starts blowing around during the wind and it moves around in, in different directions. It's very similar here, but they just move around straight into the mountains. You see like a stampede of wolves, and then it goes directly to the hawk, bring it into her child, swallow it up, and then spit it out, and then it starts to roll around like a snowball. Then it pops, and <laughs> the ticket just went back to normal, and then it goes swinging back into the cart the, the box car and straight into the window where the boy was trying to grab it and yeah and he had trouble because he even it started to go straight into the uh, the the bending uh, yeah one of the um, the AC benders <laughs> just when the conductor found out that she doesn't have the ticket so she, both the conductor and the girl decided to go straight to which at first he thought that that the conductor was going to throw her off, but nope. It turns out that she was actually at the front of the train, so he'll be able to run it. Okay, but before we get to that, the boy decided to go all the way on top of the train, and that's where he meets this mysterious drifter, yes, voiced by Hanks. And this is where he explains about if all of this is real, or this is just a dream. And this is where he begins to see the question about that. If he ever met Santa or not. And then he also says, Do you believe in ghosts? Well, this explains it. <laughs> so therefore, yes, that's what led to this entire um, journey. Because it starts to go completely crazy and insane. Because it starts to go all the way down to all these slopes. It started to become more like a roller coaster ride everywhere it leads to, it goes straight to the mountains, it goes straight to the snow, goes straight to the uh, the pond, 
even go straight to all these other obstacles and everywhere around in the mountains and in the bridge and all of that I mean incredible so of course you do meet the Smokey and Steamers they're both voiced by Michael Jeter so yes the boy this spotted the, the girl inside the front of the train and then when they wound up on the front of the locomotive uh, with the conductor yeah they had to hang on and that's where they ride in like like a roller coaster ride you know and they finally head out to the North Pole after this long uh, crazy uh, journey um, there's a long crazy trip right there and once they uh, finally arrive uh, they're already you know standing in line you know hoping to get ready to meet Santa Claus they also met all the elves around straight inside Santa's uh, workshop and, and town and all in the North Pole but then suddenly um, he found out Billy was was all alone in the observant car there was actually a moment in the movie where they were singing a song because he was all alone he doesn't care much about Christmas as much like he remembers because maybe he was just having a hard time so therefore uh, the box car yeah the observant car suddenly um, got uh, suddenly broke out got loose and wants to heading straight all together you know both the boy the hero girl and and Billy all the way down into the streets of the North Pole and they headed off into this one uh, direction where you know one of those uh, you, you know one of those train directions where it goes one track to the others you know, all in circles well then they had to climb they had to try to go straight into it which is a dangerous way where they had to try to rock tippy toe and then then they went inside to this one tunnel and inside the tunnel is actually the the mailbox slot where they sent out all the gifts uh, it was the Santa's workshop and then you begin to spot uh, the elves where they begin to watch some all these uh, footages they have all these surveillance uh, camera footages of all the kids around the world and this is where they begin to perform their naughty and nice list yeah you saw this one boy saying I didn't do it I didn't do it I didn't do it and just repeatedly and now um, so yes, they they run around in, into the uh, one of these uh, the side winders that they had, and it goes straight into the whirlpool, into the hole, yeah, where they where they have sent out all the presents that they sent out, and they gave you this one big uh, tall uh, mountain of of gifts, and that's where they started to put it together in this huge um, bag that's going to be delivered. <laughs> by Santa Claus uh, in, into his sleigh with all the reindeers around so yes of course um, the other elves were about to head off you know they show in with the pilots and all they were about to capture the the bag that they're gonna deliver but they found out that the kids were there so they slid off all the way down they pretty much accidentally knock off the the Christmas star out of the tall Christmas tree but they grab it as soon as they can so they put it back together and of course, already head off. They, they, they know they're going to send out all the gifts uh, that Santa's going to do. So now they're finally going to get a visit to Santa Claus. But even though they all got to see it, I mean, they also got to hear the silver bells because they know that he's coming. They know that he's here. Unfortunately, the boy couldn't see him until one of the silver bells from the reindeers pop up and suddenly he found one and he begins to say I believe I believe and now he finally gets to hear it and he gets to hear the bell rings and now he gets to spot Santa amazing so Santa of course has to choose uh, this one decision where who's gonna be able to grab the gift first between these kids right here you know the hero girl the know it all boy, yeah, he appeared or later on because suddenly he, he begins to find who they where they are. He was looking for them and Billy. So of course the one present that he he actually got was the silver bell. So he put it in his pocket, 
which unfortunately is the same pocket where it has the hole. And by the time they finally came back on board to the Polar Express, ready to head home, while Santa finally is ready to go straight to, to deliver all the gifts. Yeah, because there was a lot of cheering from the elves and everyone around. Yeah, you get to see, you know, Steve Tyler, yeah, Errol Smith, you know, performing and, and all. Everything. But then he found out that his silver bell was missing from his pocket, so now he feels very disappointed. But at least he did got to see Santa, and at least he got to see what was happening over there and all. And he got to meet the kids, so now he went straight home. He found out that Santa isn't here yet, but by the time he finally woke up on Christmas morning, he found out that yes, they have came. So yes, the milk and cookies had already been emptied. All the gifts have been arrived exactly on time. So all everyone had opened up all their gifts, including the last one that the boy received, and that turned out to be the silver bell that he lost. But now it's been found because he found now that Santa actually had it in his sleigh the whole time. So lucky for him that next time you gotta be more careful to have your coat being patched up so that way you'll never lose that ever again and then he gets to hear the bell same goes with his sister but unfortunately his father and mother can't hear the bell because they haven't met him and that's how I remembered it so the story ends this way and we learn that even when he grew older he still remembers uh, the silver bell and it still rains exactly how he knows because he believed in Santa <sighs> yep right there this is a magically incredibly stunning CGI animated motion capture Christmas musical fantasy adventure that really captures the spirit of Chris Van Allsburg's wonderful book that I love and I love this movie as much as I did when I saw it in feeders and it even still holds up today and I really enjoyed Tom Hanks's uh, brilliant performances playing multiple roles as the conductor who is very exhilarating himself I mean at times you kind of feel like you know he's sort of optimistic I mean why did he came but he's just doing his job trying to get everything organized Try to make things perfect while all the kids are riding around, getting a golden ticket, ride to the best journey, all the way straight to the North Pole, even though it can be very haunting at times. I mean, having to go through all these uh, obstacles, the slopes, from the, the glacier gulch all the way to the frozen lake, through all these uh, this roller coaster ride that just goes all the way through these hills with all the tracks and goes to like uh, certain mountains and they go directly to the bridge all of that and you see a lot of crazy things happening and then you begin to see um, this mysterious um, a drifter who just appears out of nowhere like we begin to find out that he might as well be a ghost but he's sort of maybe a conscience to the young boy but of course he kind of appears like he's sort of a maybe a guardian or some point but I guess he's just doing what he can to help out the boy or what he's supposed to do or any other but he just appears here and there <laughs> even though it is kind of creepy I'll be fair to say that but then the fact that you get to see the characters but mostly just those kids uh, of of the leads, you know, the know it all boy who just loves to talk about because he's very smart. I mean, and, and a genius, and yeah, he can be annoying, but I think that's how he does it so cleverly. You know, the way Eddie Deason portrays that role was when he just talks about everything he knows, you know, about you know trains and all his other stuff and and presents, and then he pretty much knows everything. <laughs> But then you get this young, sweet, um, black girl who who definitely um, is just so spiritual that she just knows that 
he do, she does believe in Santa and, and she just can't wait to to meet him and be able to experience the best times of her life and also helping out this young boy you know Billy and also the other boy trying to help him out as well because even he's trying to find out the the existence of Santa Claus and he hoping this is not a dream because <laughs> he even pinches his uh, arm to figure that out but Nope, it isn't, because <laughs> it still hurts. Um, yeah, they're just like wonderful shots, and I know they sort of uh, captured that from from all of the realism of the locomotive, because this was actually, believe it or not, is based upon the Grand Canyon Railway and and the other Polar Express trains and Norfolk Railway in the UK. There's other kinds of locomotives that follows uh, that's based upon that. And, of course, the the administration building uh, at the Pullman Palace Car Company was used as a, an exterior for, for these shots. Uh, they really try to capture exactly what, how trains can really move and how, and how these other trains, you know, going for the more classy feel. That's how they did it, you know, with the boxcars and all these other compartments here and there. And the way you see how it goes inside. Oh, and it has some wonderful dance um, numbers as we know it. I did mention about the hot chocolate scene. Yeah, Krill, which was performed by Tom Hanks himself. I mean, he really did a great job. I mean, it was like a, it gives it a, a heartbeat uh, jazzy uh, swing number. Uh, with all the other uh, waiters around, dancing around, doing all these you know, hand sprains, uh, flips, and all. Um, the one song that almost made me shed the tears, uh, and this was a beautiful song called When Christmas Comes to Town. And boy, trust me, if you hear that song, I guarantee you you're going to cry. I guarantee you. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but I did love the song Rocking on Top of the World by Steve Tyler, yes, from Aerosmith. And... And they even had to blend in with all the Christmas songs, uh, even when they were trying to go inside the Santa's workshop into the uh, the factory uh, when they spotted the the elves and all. And they were like riding around on a sidewinder slide. I mean, that's incredible. And many others that they put into it. And and I. I gotta say, you know, that I thought they did a great job. Uh, Rob Zemeckis really deserves a lot of credit for what he did, and so is Tom Hanks, because this is his film. Um, yeah, when this came out in theaters, it got criticized, got mixed reviews, which I don't understand. Rotten Tomatoes giving this a 56% does not deserve, it probably deserves a lot higher than that, like a certified fresh. Luckily, Cinema Scores gave it an A plus for all viewers. And a lot of people out there actually enjoyed it so much that it got multiple viewings that aired on cable networks around, and even streaming for that matter. So, and of course, physical media because they they they're a big seller for holiday movies and gifts around, so everyone can actually own a copy and they'll get to watch it any time during the holiday season. So this is perfect for that reason, and I love that. But it it does deserve a lot of respect, and rightly so, and I'm glad they did, they did that. But I, I know maybe some people find it creepy at times. I mean, maybe some of the, the CGI didn't seem to look a little quite right as they fought about it, especially with the little girl, um, like the way she was captured or any other. But it didn't quite bother me as much, especially the way I saw it uh, uh, back in 2004. And, and even seeing it now, I mean... It never bothered me afterwards, but I guess they suddenly got used to it after a while. But still, it deserves a lot of credit. And also, you can't forget the song "Believe" by Josh Groban because he did a tremendous job uh, with that song. And and it's true because it really shows the powerful message that no matter what happens, you will always believe in what you see. And that's what's important, and this is exactly how the conductor told him to. And I love how when he was punching all these validations on the golden tickets, 
you begin to see a message that's being hidden around, like believe, led, and and even uh, go to, follow to, and <laughs> and other ones. But they they really put that in perfectly. I I, I love that. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, the Polar Express, wonderful film to check out, especially on the holiday season. And I give the film five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.